we have 9.45 gigabits per second. We finally installed something that works. Hello players, today we are going to be installing a 10 gigabit home network with equipment sent to me by FS.com, who are the sponsors of this video. This is part of a series of videos of how we can get 10 gigabit networking inside the home, or an office, or even a large office. Uh, we'll talk you through what you need to get up and running. And we have not one, but two 10 gigabit switches from FS.com. These are the S935-4012S. I love model numbers and are probably a little bit overkill for what we are doing, but give a ton of expandability for the future. I will be doing a review of this switch as part of this series, so get subbed if you want to see that. But if this particular switch is not for you, FS.com have a huge selection of network switches for projects just like this and for larger scale server deployments, including fanless models if sound is a concern. Now, in a home setup there are two ways we can tackle this project depending on, on your budget and your love for cables. One way is to have the switch tucked out of the way somewhere and run all of your devices straight to it, which means more cables, or you can connect two or more of these switches together with a single cable each and have them closer to the devices that you're using, which is what we are going to be doing because I have already run CAT6A cable outside connecting the upstairs and downstairs in case I got the opportunity to install 10 gigabit equipment. Now, unless you spend the big, big bucks on a super fancy motherboard, the chances are that you'll probably only have gigabit port on your PC or maybe 2.5 or 5 gigabit if you're lucky. And although it's not stated on the specs, the switch we're using does support those in between speeds, but do be wary because 2.5 and 5 gigabit were not always recognized standards, so there is a chance of a compatibility issue, especially if you're using older hardware, but it is, it is unlikely. So to get a 10 gigabit port on the server and the gaming PC, or home theater PC, FS.com sent these. These are 10 gigabit PCIe cards. Now they are SPF plus, and I chose these because they were cheaper than the 10 gigabit RJ45 cards, but 10 gigabit RJ45 would work just as well. So we'll just get this installed. Now Windows should just pick this up by default. There shouldn't be anything fancy you need to worry about there. So the plan is to have one switch upstairs and connect the Unraid server, the router, a PC, and a security camera DVR to it. From there, we connect it to the CAT6A that's outside and connect that to the switch that is downstairs and connect three games consoles, a wireless access point, and a gaming home theater PC to it. This should, in theory, providing my cabling is okay, provide ten, a 10 gigabit connection from the gaming PC to the Unraid server. On the switch, we'll be connecting our RJ45 cables to it with these. These are SPF Plus transceivers. They won't protect your skin from the sun, but they do come in all sorts of configurations. Don't worry too much about it because they are pretty straightforward. And I will have a full video coming on network transceivers, which will help. But the easy version is that you plug your cable into the transceiver and then into the switch. What's great is the switch doesn't really care about what type of cable is between two switches. You can use a fiber optic cable or, you know, in our case, good old ethernet. With fiber optic, it must go from transceiver to transceiver. But because ethernet is uh, layer one and two on the OSI model, you can go straight from SPF on the switch to any standard RJ45 sockets like you would find on a router or PC, which makes Ethernet a very easy choice for the home. Standard SPF will operate at one gigabit. Uh, SPF plus will do up to 10 gigabit, so you'll want SPF plus if you're going for 10. There are faster connections in SPF plus, and I'll cover those in the FPFs, FPF video. There's a lot of SFPFs there. <laughs> So let's get everything wired up. Apart from the transceivers, there's not really much more to setting up enterprise-grade equipment than standard consumer equipment if you are using it for standard consumer things. There are, of course, a whole plethora of other settings which you can change if you want to do more advanced things like set up VLANs or link aggregation or port mapping and so on. That can all be configured in the management console. Here in the management console where you can monitor the connections. And look, we have 10 gigabit copper, baby. Woo! The big question is why? What could you possibly need 10 gigabit for? Are you ever gonna use all of those gigabits at once? And the answer is, Probably not, but one gigabit 
can easily be saturated. Currently, our internet connection is 500 megabits, and when we upgrade to one gigabit in the near future, we'll never really get that full speed if the cables or network adapters are sharing that bandwidth from, say, I don't know, four movies from a Plex server or something. In fact, in fact, as soon as you put a server on or a NAS on your home network, you can easily bottleneck a one gigabit connection pretty quickly. Chuck in a couple of PoE cameras and that one gigabit will start the struggle. What's also another great use case is SSDs. A typical SATA SSD is about 500 megabytes per second read, which is about four gigabits per second, which means you can get the full speed of a SATA SSD over the network. And if you're a nerd like me, that's, that's very exciting because you can have, say, a, a NAS of SSDs with all its backups and redundancy and all the good things that a NAS gives you and do, say, video work straight from it. Another thing you can do is install games on an SSD NAS and there won't be any slowdown in loading times, which is what we'll be testing when everything is set up. And according to NVIDIA, GPU direct storage does work with network storage, although there's no games that work with direct storage yet, so we can't test that, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so the server's connected at 10 gigabit, editing PC is connected at 2.5, the router is connected with one, and the DVR with one. Cool. Okay, so outside, connect at 10 gigabit, let's go downstairs. We're downstairs, we've got the downstairs switch that's connected to the upstairs switch running along outside the house. Connected to that via a Cat 6A is the home theater media PC. Uh, the downstairs uh, wireless access point is connected with one gigabit ethernet and the game consoles I decided to leave plugged into this because they are cable managed and that took me a few hours to do the first time. I don't really feel like doing that again, but we're, we're going to be testing the, this connection, hopefully. As you can see, we've got 10 gigabits on the, on the NIC, on the network interface card. That's the one that we installed earlier. So that seems to be working but now we need to check that we that we're getting the speeds that this this says with and we'll do that with iperf but the setup is complete of course you would cable manage it a lot better than this but this this is this is fine for for our testing we'll get um iperf fired up and um task manager because because we like to see it so this is the ip address of the unraid server that's upstairs it's also running iperf as a server we're going to hit this and see what kind of speeds we get we should be looking at around nine gigabits per second and that's that's not nine gigabits per second why why is that not nine okay well it's better than one we got <laughs> got 5.15 why is that not 10 It's not 10 because I didn't put this into iperf. Uh, that was only one stream. So if you want to test multiple streams, I think eight is the recommended. So if you do a dash P8, that should hopefully, there we go. We have 9.45 gigabits per second. <laughs> it works. We finally installed something that works. Um, there we go. So that's that's come out at 9.45 gigabits per second and 9.44. We can see over on Task Manager that that's exactly the same. Up here is where it peaked at just below 10 gigabits per second. Now that I'm very happy with that, especially with the network overhead and everything else kind of connected and, and, and doing its own thing. Um, that's that's really good. We'll transfer a file from from the SSD cache on the Unraid server to to this machine. And, and we'll see how that goes. So this is a nine gigabyte video file, just gonna transfer across the network from upstairs on the RAID server to down here. And it's starting out 950 megabytes per second, and then it drops off. And that's kind of what I expected really. The, so as you see on the network, it, it hit up there, it was eight, eight megabits per second across the network, fine. Uh, this this fall off in speed is is the local SSD that's on there. So it's obviously filled up the the cache on the SSD. It's only a SATA SSD, and um, it's kind of hit that wall afterwards. But nine gigabytes, pretty quick. 
over the network. I'm happy with that. That's nice. So what I've done is I've set up a, a network share drive and what we're going to do is we're going to install GTA 5 because that is a good metric for testing load times. Um, we're going to test load times of GTA 5 installed on that network drive on the Unraid server upstairs and we're going to test it installed locally on an SSD on here. The drive upstairs are a little bit slower than, than these ones. These are Samsung Evos and upstairs I think is just a uh, Western Digital Drive. But we should see very similar load time performance if we're getting, getting the full speed from the network, which will be interesting to see. Okay, so that was a little bit slower over the network, but not by much. So we almost got full SSD speeds over, over the NAS, over the network, which was really, really cool to see. So I'm very excited about that. It may have been a little bit slower because the, the cache drive on the Unraid server may have been doing something else. So that may have affected read write speeds a little bit, but that's very cool. Very cool to see. Well, we got there and as you can see, using SPF Plus and Ethernet is not really too much more to it than just Ethernet. And if the S3950-4T12S is too much, FS.com have a great selection of switches, big and small and fanless. They also have a switch that uses 10 gigabit RJ45 ports. I would like to see more SPF Plus in the consumer space because most consumer grade 10 gigabit stuff is very limited. So I really think using smaller enterprise equipment is, is probably a good way to go. For future videos in this 10 gigabit series, we'll cover SPF Plus ports in depth, a review of the S3950-4T12S switch, that's, that's this one, and what the future of home networking looks like. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching this one, and thanks to our sponsor, FS.com, for sending the equipment to allow me to show you guys this. And until next time, keep playing and be excellent to each other.